Here we are in the Nazareth village. Think of uh, Souter village except a few thousand years before that. This is a place that was a first century farm based on some of the archaeological evidence that they've dug up here. You have olive trees that are the green, you have almond trees that are the white, and then these are different actors that they hire to help cultivate the farmland that goes up to that wall up top and all the way over here, the same way that it would have been cultivated in the first century. What you see over here is uh, sheep to kind of represent uh, shepherds, the role of a shepherd and the role of sheep. They are flock animals, they know their shepherd's voice, they know the smell of their shepherd and they would have been trained from birth to follow that shepherd's voice. This location is in modern day the city of Nazareth, which is a large, relatively large city in the northern part of Galilee. You can see all the apartment complexes around. They're growing some wheat over here that they will harvest in the summer. This is the tools that they use for the threshing floor. And our group is over here getting a little experience with a first century tomb. Tombs, well, the, when a loved one was deceased, they would typically be buried in the ground if they were from a poor family. If they were from a more wealthy family, they would be embalmed and placed inside of a limestone tomb that would have been carved down. And uh, they would have been left there for about a year until their bodies decomposed. And then uh, there's a passage in the Bible that talks about how the, the, the death of a loved one, they were put with the bones of their fathers or laid with their fathers. Um, at the end of a year, after they were embalmed or whatever, they would come back and collect their bones and place them in another niche inside of the tomb, some ways like with their fathers. So there would be your whole family. Um, sounds crass, but all piled together. This is what the inside of the tomb kind of looks like there. Notice is how they're building the roof. One of the most common wood that you would use is cypress tree, okay, one of the most common ones, building. Then they would have a layer of cane to support the structure, and then three layers of mud. So they had mud roofs, and you would usually replace that after three, four years. So, yeah, but the, the layers themselves, you have the first and the third layer, is a mixture of mud, gravel, cinder, and hay to make it waterproof. And they would have simply a dry soil in the middle to absorb all the rainwater and moisture. Now, Remember that story where it says Jesus was in a gathering place and it was so crowded that they just couldn't bring the layman inside through the door, so they went through the roof. Imagine taking somebody's roof apart and you can take Would have been a kitchen. When we were here last time, they had a fire going. And then uh, bedrooms. Yeah. The lights just went out. Everyone say hello to Hana. Hi. 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 Welcome. And we saw our sheep. Actually, all the wool that we sheared about, you know, in about April. Uh, before the heat comes here and it's washed and dried and the next stage when they start working with wool they have to give it more volume and extract all the impurities so usually they card the wool and then usually small pieces will be turned into yarn like the ones here and these are natural colors of the sheep so usually at this stage when they're still working with the wool you know you have to decide whether you want to color or not so this is the natural color but let's say if they wanted to dye the material in another color so for something like this, they use nutshells. Okay, so they were simply boiling the nutshells in water and then allowing the water to cool off. They would take white wool, put it inside so that it <coughs> soaks up all the color. And then they would use grape vinegar to simply settle the color on the material. For this color, they used onion peels. Okay, you see the more you boil, the stronger the color. And the same basic process. Any idea what they were using for a color like this here? First century radio. Holographic yeah. 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 yeah.
<laughs> cheese snail had to be preserved in salt water until use and taken out and they were squeezing them. So each snail would only give a few drops of ink. So that is not a lot. So you need about three to 5,000 snails just for coloring one roll. But probably that's the reason why they, they went extinct there. Very rare. <laughs> so it wasn't catching the release. <laughs> yeah. And so after the coloring, then they start making yarn and you can see how they were doing that. They were usually taking the wool. And so she connected to the edge of the thread. You can see that. And then as she spins.